This right here has quickly become my favorite tool for managing all my home servers. And no, this is not a laptop. This right here is technically a KVM and its advertised use case is turning your smartphone into a 15.6 inch laptop wired or wireless. This is the Nextdoc XL. Full disclosure, they did go ahead and send this over to me, but they're not gonna review this video, anything like that. So there is a little bit of bias there. I didn't have to pay for it. And my favorite use case for this thing, scrolling through their website here, really isn't even an advertised purpose. But damn it, it's the best purpose for me. <laughs> this is a random eBay listing I found. I've always wanted something like this. This is a Switch uh, U1 rack mount KVM, which gives you a stationary kind of slide out way to have a keyboard and mouse and hook it up to various machines in your home server. I have a number of machines, I think six different systems running various different things. And prior to using this, my main method to manage them and actually get display over there was using a cheap wired keyboard and this kind of monitor here. You can see I'm using it as a a monitor for my camera, unplugging that and hooking it up. That little monitor is actually a like Raspberry Pi touchscreen thing. Pretty cool, I do have a little separate video on it if you're interested. But ultimately doing all that is kind of a pain in the ass. This requires a single plugin, specifically this little uh, USB-C. Thing. And it does have an internal battery, so hooking up something like a Raspberry Pi, it gives it enough power to go ahead and fire up and actually use. So I'm going getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and talk about the specs of this thing. It is a 15.6 inch IPS touchscreen. Oh, I never took this off. I really don't want to. So if I go ahead and peel it off. Oh. Oh, I don't like that. The only con with the touchscreen is it kind of feels, it's too grippy, it's too grippy. And I did have their previous model and it was the same problem. A quick and easy solution is to get a matte screen protector and that completely solves that issue. Sliding the finger isn't that pleasant without a screen protector on it. This is a 1080p screen with 60 hertz at a 16, nine aspect ratio. There is room here. I feel like it could have been a 16 by 10, which is significantly better in my opinion, but it works. The battery is 49 watt hours with an output of 11.4 volts at 4,300 milliamp hours an equivalency of six or 3.6 volts at 13,600 milliamp hours. And it does have wireless charging uh, capabilities, which is the main reason there's a big empty spot here. So you can go ahead and set your phone on it. And I think it has to be on. Oh, there we go. Ah, make it so you can see that. If I set my phone on it here, you can see it's charging up. So that's really nice if you actually intend on using it with something like Samsung DeX, which is a cool use case, but I barely actually use that. And despite it not being an actual laptop, it is as heavy as one, coming in at just under 2,000 grams. And we also have a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, as you can power it separately and have a uh, HDMI plugged into this, as well as an additional USB for your uh, keyboard and mouse control. Here we have the USB-C PD charging port, the USB uh, 3.1 display port, which does support um, five volt charging, and then the mini HDMI 1.A port. And then going over to the other side, we have a standard USB-A uh, data port, headphone jack, um, micro SD card reader, and of course our power button. It does have audio. There are four two watt speakers, which don't sound the best, but it can put out sound. Chances are, for example, the audio on this uh, Galaxy 23 Ultra is Better. The keyboard here is a backlit keyboard. You can see it's edge to edge or at least edge to the touchpad for, or trackpad, sorry, which this touchpad does support uh, multi-gesture control. Now, before I get into my use case, I'm gonna talk about Samsung DeX real quick. You can control this wirelessly through Bluetooth, which, eh, plug it in, plug it in. You're gonna have a better experience. It's gonna be much smoother. It's gonna feel native basically versus a wired Bluetooth connection. And with Samsung DeX, which I did cover more uh, extensively in the video of the smaller version of this, you could do basically everything on your phone, open up applications in kind of a desktop mode look. It really makes it nice if you're on the go and you just want to bring your phone and this and use it to do emails, things like that. Overall, Samsung DeX is a really nice and fluid experience plugging it into this thing. For most people who do every thing on their phone, just having a bigger version of it is a huge upgrade that if you do work on your phone a lot is definitely worth checking out. Now my secondary use case for this thing, which I actually do quite often, 
is using this with the Steam Deck. I still have one of the original Steam Decks and I probably use it every other day, if not every single day, primarily for either cloud gaming or for retro gaming. And the thing with retro gaming is you do end up having to go into the desktop mode to kind of manage your downloads, where things are, manage your emulators and things like that. And if you've ever tried to use the desktop mode just on the Steam Deck it, itself, while it is a possible experience, it is not a pleasant one. This right here makes it a pleasant experience. Just plugging it in and going into desktop mode, we have basically a uh, two monitor setup. We have our little Steam Deck monitor, use a little accessory. I have, I'll, I'll leave a link down below, uh, affiliate links to some Amazon things that I use for my Steam Deck. Plug this thing in and you have a full, basically KDE Plasma Linux desktop experience and it feels like it's just running directly on this laptop, even though it's running off the Steam Deck. And in addition to kind of managing uh, various things in a Linux system, I've also used this to do something like playing uh, kind of those top-down games that aren't really very easy to play on a Steam Deck, something like a uh, City Skylines, or even like Zero AD is a really, really pleasant experience playing on this. So that is definitely an added benefit in addition just to managing things. And with cloud gaming, since it's not that resource intensive, you're just, it's a video stream from a browser with input and output. You can use the Steam Deck to cloud game on this 15 plus inch display here. So that's a capability and that capability works great. Now with my main use case and where I see myself kind of whipping this out more than any other time is of course in my home lab, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Before it was an absolute pain to grab the keyboard and this monitor and take it over there and try to set everything up. This with most devices requires that single uh, USB-C, but an example of a device, I think the uh, Zima Cube that I recently set up my Proxmox instance on, I used this to go ahead and get that up and going using a USB-C to A from the device to the Zima Cube and then that uh, micro HDMI to regular HDMI, just plugged it in and it, it worked great. I was able to get Proxmox installed. The screen is 1080p, so I was able to see everything moderately decently as compared to when I tried to use a 4K capture card as my pass through when I recorded the video on installing Proxmox. That was a nightmare. And basically plugging into any like mini PC that supports a display out of a USB, you're going to be able to use this to actually manage that system. And my last example of that is I have a uh, Intel Nook. I believe it's a 13th generation Intel. And I'm currently using that as my whole Nextcloud server. And I have um, Udu on it currently because I'm testing and playing around with that. But that was another fairly seamless experience of just plugging it in single cord right into the back little USB-C and having full display uh, keyboard, mouse, full KVM action. And of course here it does have some of its own settings. When you go ahead and connect, you can see here this is the, uh, the Bluetooth settings for the screen, keyboard, and wireless display. You have the USB-C connection options, but right here if I swipe down here with two fingers to show settings, do that real quick, you can see our settings. So we have typical brightness, contrast, and sound control, as well as input selection and some charging options here. Or I could go over here and have some more advanced control over the uh, HDR, kind of color and all that. I can reset it through here. And that, that's really it when it comes to settings. We can see the charge level, it's currently at 73% there. Overall, uh, pretty basic, but everything you actually need. So that is the next Dock XL. Let me know down below what you think. If we look over here on their website, hit buy now, how much is this thing right now? $329. Ah, still, I mean, you're getting a really good display keyboard and mouse. If you add like the price of the m mobile monitor, uh, decent like keyboard trackpad combo, you're, eh, you're about half that. <laughs> but then you throw in the battery and the uh, wireless charging. It's it's understandable. They do have the regular next dock here, which this one's uh, much smaller, doesn't have the wireless charging, I don't believe. If I hit buy now on this guy, oh, it's not that much different. <laughs> so $30 difference between the two. You might as well go with the bigger one. What's the next pad? Ooh, turn your phone into a tablet. This I'd probably never use. Hey, you get a used one for 129, that's not bad. So yeah, that's the next dock. It's probably one of my favorite things that I've received because it just makes managing home servers and all that and managing my Steam Deck significantly easier. I love it. If you're interested in checking it out for yourself, I will leave a link down below to their website. If it's on Amazon, I'll put an affiliate link. And with all that, I do hope that you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.